Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for making it to this talk. Uh, I, when I read my title, I have to say that it's not the most exciting title, maybe. So I, I wonder why why you're here. <laughs> Try to avoid as many uh, people as possible. No. So actually, um, yeah, this is just a 20 minutes talk, and um, yeah, it's very difficult to bring uh, things across. So I didn't use any of the prepared talks that you typically have in your drawer. Also, I'm not going to talk about uh, the company, Savedo, or myself so much, but um, I'm in uh, yeah, the data business for, I don't know how long, 10, 15, 20, yeah, maybe 10, 15 years. And I would just like to make two points, and I'll, I'll try to do that in a, yeah, in a, in a simple way, so don't expect uh, videos or fancy graphics, it's just very simple. So, um, oh, that was wrong. This is right. So two, two, girl, uh, two goals for today are, one, I would just like to show for, for maybe some of you who are data guys, um, interesting applications for, for data analysis, big data, because I remember when I finished studies, I had tools given to me at university, but I had no clue of how to really use them or where they, they could contribute value. And, and just later I learned um, yeah, that people had problems and, and that I could be the solution to their problems. This is going to be my first point. And my second point is based on my experience now as a, as a managing director. You have a, a company that is growing, that is doing stuff and um, things are not working and you have an excellent uh, BI guy. You maybe uh, buy expensive tools and you have also excellent business guys and still sometimes it's not working. And so I'll just give a very simple example at, uh, at the end uh, from the financial industry of where that kind of is symbolic for the problem or that I see. So the, ad the first thing is um, an example from the advertising industry. My last company was in advertising. It, it was called GBD. It was a, a stealth company, also part of Hitfox. Um, and yeah, it was an ad tech company doing data-driven media buying. So that was very interesting to me. Uh, I first learned that there's ad servers and that they are built to just deliver advertisements to people, either this people that are browsing the internet on a PC or on a mobile device. And the ad server uh, can practically decide um, which ad to display or which banner to display, and he has some information given. So on the left side, we see here the typical information that is contained in an HTTP header. So the HTTP header will tell you what device a guy is using, where he's located, uh, what time it is, where he is, so what time zone is he in, and so on. And all this information can be used. And so web servers do that typically, or have started to do that. So in the beginning, it was a static banner that was on a web page all month. And then at the end of the month, a new banner came up. And then you had ad servers where you had a prepared slot and you had to decide which ad to best show. And maybe in the evening, it was a different one than in the afternoon. So as a, as a computer scientist or as a data guy, you have an optimization problem. So the question is, which ad optimizes a certain uh, criterion? And this is typically the numbers. I mean, those of you who are in advertising, they will know like CPM, CPC, CPI. These stand for cost per click or soft cost per uh, install or, cost or a customer lifetime value. So you want to optimize some of that based on how you get paid. And there has been quite some uh, development. And um, in the last years, uh, there's a new thing that is called real-time bidding. And this is where the heart of a data guy uh, or gets excited. Because basically, normally, the assumption is that everybody sees the, or like the very basic or one end of the spectrum is showing the same ad to everyone and um, earning the same money with everyone. So I show all of you the same ad, but if it's for flowers, some of you might want to buy it, some others don't. If it's for cars, some of you might want to buy it or some not. So knowing that, the next 
uh, rational step is to say, okay, if each one of you reacts differently to something, then I might want to show you something different. And as I said before, there is information about who you are. Maybe I've seen you in the past because you carry a cookie. So based on that information, I can... Is this also a laser pointer? Yes. So based on this information, I can go to uh, an individual price. So, so maybe this is the price I would pay for, for showing you an ad. So you are, you're maybe the owner of a very brand new iPhone and um, you're a German, so I can see that also. So I might want to pay a little bit more to show you something. But maybe I've seen you before, maybe on some bad internet sites, maybe you're not even real, so I might not want to pay so much for you. And with this logic, people have built um, a system that is able within like 100 milliseconds to trade impressions. So there's a, a web page that says I'm a famous newspaper and I have uh, a banner ad in this size and currently there's uh, whatever a young lady from uh, Berlin visiting my site do you want to show your ad and everybody who's connected to that server has several milliseconds to give a bit and of course everybody has different information maybe everybody sells different products but this is kind of what happens so there is a there's a 100 millisecond time frame from a user, a user visiting a site over this system announcing it to all connected parties that there is a, uh, an available bit. Um, then every computer for himself, based on their individual information, evaluating kind of the decision and, and making a choice, a monetary choice, giving this, this information a monetary value and then bidding. And then you either submit the bid in time or not, uh, and, or either in you win or not. And if you win the bid, you can show whatever ad you want. So this is the real-time bidding thing. And now, why is, it, why is it very interesting? Because if you look at big data, so these are the three famous Vs, so it stands for, for a high volume, so that you have terabytes of data, a uh, variety that it's maybe very different and can have unstructured data and velocity that you might have some real-time requirements, then this problem of RTB, I personally would draw it like in this area. So the variety of this data is, is not so strong, so it's pretty much standardized data, but it is a lot. So this platform will send you like 20,000 requests per second. So 20,000 times per second, you have to make the choice, do you want to bid on this impression, yes or no? and how much. And it's money. So uh, how good you do this will, de um, will decide if, if your company is profitable, break even, make losses, or even being awesome. So if you always buy the right things, uh, of course, there's a safe bet. You, you never buy anything, so you cannot lose money. But if you want to scale a business, you need to become pretty good at this. And so you have both a lot of data and uh, and real-time requirements. So this is why, why it is very interesting, and I uh, didn't know about this, and um, so by chance I stepped into this. So how do you solve it? So this is a 20 minutes talk, as, as I said before, so I, I cannot uh, show a whole uh, RTB platform or what happens in the back end, but there is, there is definitely a trend. So in the beginning, people would just uh, look at every tenth or hundredth uh, impression because they couldn't handle it and they, had, they were using some databases to store what has happened. So I have shown whatever one million impressions last month, who actually clicked on it, who converted, and then do the normal correlation analysis and then find out that my ad performs in the evening better than in the afternoon. So in the evening I'm going to bid twice as much as in the afternoon. Um, then you collect data over time, and you want to correlate all the data. So you have a, a, a very savvy guy that comes and says, like, yeah, like, I watched soccer on the weekend, and I have the feeling we should totally analyze our data by putting in the dates of all soccer matches. If not, some of our ads uh, correlate with soccer matches so that people who are doing a soccer match buy some more or less. So then you start crunching the existing data, but that is a, a fixed amount of historic data that you can crunch. 
So for that, there's solutions. So MapReduce uh, ways to do it, Hadoop clusters, whatnot, and you do that. And you can do this frequently. So if you have enough money, you can spin up the servers every weekend, do a new analysis. Or, and this is the next level, you create a system that continuously learns. So that learns right from the first minute. And this is very crucial because you want to first do A-B testing on a lot of stuff. So even for the same product, you might want to vary your banners that you have. Does the pink button work better or the blue one? And um, also vary what you show to a certain kind of group. And plus, you will get new products. So if you run a company, then it's not a scientific problem. Uh, there is someone that is calling you and asking you, can you, whatever, deliver such and such many clicks. And so you have to, to think, is this product good enough? How much am I going to bid for this product initially without any past historical data? So you'll have to think, OK, this is whatever. It's a, a downloadable game. It, it's similar to Candy Crush. Yeah, let's try it in, in, in Germany and England first, because that's the countries that played the most. See where, where that ranges, and then you kind of try. So you are collecting kind of data but with real money. So every data collection you want to do, you have to pay for it because you first bid and then you observe. So that means also everybody that tells you about how it's possible to target advertising to someone at a, at a billboard or doing super advanced things when he has the retina display, no. Because in the beginning, you don't have any data statistically, so you just have some priors. And then over time, you learn something. So but you can then decide. You have a limited amount of data, and you cannot um, analyze it based on 100 different features. So you can do it with two features, and you can choose them. But over time only, it will be possible to get very granular. So, so that, is, that is the challenge here. So I think this is one of the very, very interesting um, fields to apply it. Um, Stream processing is, is the next level where you continuously move data through a pipeline. I would encourage you to look at that. People that spend time with big data, MapReduce, this is a different way of thinking, not completely different, very similar, but actually uh, has some nice aspects to it. It typically comes with a whole architecture that often also includes MapReduce parts for uh, frequent crunching or correlation of data. Uh, Pre-processed data packages, because you typically want to have daily or weekly or monthly things. So if you group your data in little packages, so a pipeline can have single elements flowing through it, but you can also have daily data packages or weekly data packages or monthly ones flowing through your thing. So that is kind of where the design starts. But also algorithmically, it's very different. So whenever you can, you try to implement an algorithm that um, for example, you imagine stock market data, or whatever it is, the same is here. Instead of stock market data with an average price, you have an average conversion rating for a conversion rate for a typical group. So over time, with each impression, you want to update it. So um, also to have what you have in stock trading, you have a stop loss or something. It's the same for a product. It can be that it worked fine, but then it breaks. So if you don't have if you don't realize that there is something going on, it can also be something technical, some server is down or something, or your, um, your graphic that you have on your ad server is broken, so it doesn't display those, so that's why nobody converts. Um, so you want to have a continuous learning and, and have algorithms that, whatever, compute the average by taking the previous average, adding a new number, and then uh, just weighing that. Um, and very strongly, for most problems, we learn at university uh, very good solutions that are very precise and work very well. But actually, reality doesn't require that. So we always have some precision requirements. But for this bidding thing, whether I bid 2 euros 73 or 74 probably won't make the difference. It's more about, like, am I gonna, is it going to be in the range of 270 or 3 euros or 5 or 10 or 20? So that means in, in times of uh, limited time, uh, you want to do things fast. And so um, losing precision is, is uh, a different way of thinking. Um, 
just checking the watch. Okay. Um, this is the first thing. So the points I wanted to make in this part is really encouraged into looking, at, in, uh, looking into ad tech and the challenges, but also the technologies applied. If you're in a different field that has similar requirements, be it real time, lots of data or both, look at what tools those guys need because they do it with money, lots of money. It's one of the biggest industries. So typically, whereas a lot of money, people are the most creative in solving stuff. Um, and, oops, and the second one is that, uh, yeah, we should always look for the best tool, meaning the opposite of just use what you have always used or don't use what everybody's using. Like, come to events like this and be inspired by whatever this. There's a, a, a guy also in Berlin, uh, Nikio Braun, I think is his name. He's from the Technical University. He's very much into stream processing. He, uh, yeah, said some things that inspired me and made me look into that. And so I, I want to give some props to him. The, th the second one is, is much shorter. It's just a story. Like I said in the beginning, my point here is that dealing with business and dealing with technology, we often forget that there's humans involved. So uh, this is just on my, on my personal experience. And I, I just want to tell a, a story. So I was an, on one of these uh, banking meetings or bank meetings. And one of a, a really famous guy, a professor that has one of the largest working groups, a business professor um, for stock trading and so on. And he's a commission member for the new regulation that is coming up. He gave us a talk and said, like, yeah, and this new regulation requires to uh, look at historic data. And we did it and I had a team on, and it was working on an incredible amount of data. Uh, they had analyzed 700 million trades and it took them one and two months and and one of the results was they were able to uh, compute the average trade size over this huge data, data set that, that doesn't fit the, the main memory. So, uh, I don't know, the people in here will also probably immediately see like, what is the problem? So, uh, and that is the point here. So, I just want to do a little bit pocket math. So, I was in the audience and I was like, what's the problem? And I did some pocket math and so, so I say, okay, if, even if you have more than a billion trades and a trade file is like a kilobyte or a 10, so you end up with a terabyte or 10. Well, that's not terrible. Like you can go to a, a shop and buy a terabyte hard drive. So that's not the problem. And so the trade amounts themselves, probably they're in euros or dollars. So if you have them as a, as a normal integer, like a four byte or 32 bit integer, okay. If you have a, a billion of that, that's four gigabytes. Okay, I can see that if he tries to do it in Excel or Excess or whatever this working group uses, he's gonna have a memory problem, but only with naive solution. And then someone in the audience, uh, because actually the average was not such a good solution, he's like, hey, excuse me, why didn't you compute the median? And he's like, oh my God, like how can you compute the median out of such a large number of data sets? That's not possible. I'm like, what, you can do that on a notebook. So what the question here is, what can we do um, if we know the purpose? The purpose of why to do something. Like if I tell you compute an average or compute a median, you will do it and you'll take your school book. But if you know the purpose why you do it, you might do it in a different way. So uh, this might be an example trade. So that's 147 million trade and a, and a few cents. So if the average is, for this regulation, just to find a threshold to categorize trades into either one or the other category, it's totally sufficient to have that with a precision of 1,000 euros. So by and large, you will just um, make an average with a precision of 1,000 euros. So you can reduce all numbers uh, to K euro values and you eliminate all those things. You get much smaller um, numbers. And if you avoid any database, but you have it in a simple text file even, you can just um, just add it up in your memory like that, count how many of that you have, divide it, and you're done. Um, and this probably everybody knows it, but probably never talks about it. So probably every math student could tell him, but he obviously is not talking to math students. Uh, even though he's a professor, probably this university has a, has a math department. Uh, and the math students don't know his problem because they never go to bank talks where they hear EU commissioners talk about EU problems. 
second is a median. So if the goal is uh, to find a rough marker what the median is, and also with a precision of 1K, it's also super simple. So we, if you have some knowledge of the data, you look at it and you see, oh, actually, 99% of trades are less than a billion euros. Actually, a, a, a billion euro trade is rarely happening. So you have 1 million different 1K euro buckets, right? Because there's a million different ways to trade with a 1K euro precision. You can make a histogram. You just say, was it a 1,000 euro trade, a 2,000, and so on. And you count how many of them you have. And, and you can do that with four me megabytes of memory. So you can do it on my old first PC, maybe, or second. So, so that, is, that is my takeaway. So most things are possible very easily. Um, and you can solve it also by, by renting an, an AWS Hadoop cluster or something. But if you give a scientist the full picture, um, then it can solve the problem as well. And so that is my, my second and last thing, which brings me of one of the first slides I saw at university, which was a slide showing business and IT, and in the middle, like the people that are supposed to be the bridge and talk to each other. So I think that is my, my, my second and last takeaway, that it's super important to connect these worlds in your company. If you're a startup or something, make these people understand uh, each other's problem fully, and then they will bring you also a cheaper solution. So if you're looking at budget, uh, it can be much cheaper to do it on a, on a notebook than in a Hadoop cluster. That's it. Thank you very much.